Tila. Hi, Tila. Oh, Hitila. Yes, you may call me Hitila. When everybody, when I meet new people, like, oh, what's your name, girl? Hitila. <laughs> In the early 2000s, Tila Tequila came bursting onto the scene as the newest sex symbol. But this time, she was doing it in a new way. See, when Anna Nicole Smith or Marilyn Monroe made their mark on the world, they were doing it through movies, commercials, or modeling. And sure, Tila dabbled a little bit with those too, even posing for Playboy like her sex symbol predecessors. But she also seemed to invent a whole new way of becoming famous, social media. And that's right, Tila Tequila was ahead of her time, amassing fans online before it was the cool thing to do. And she even created her own website to sell her images and her time. Think essentially like OnlyFans before OnlyFans. People would need special access to get to her site and she would allow them into her secret fantasy world. Soon, she was welcomed with open arms onto the social media platform that seemed to be taking over the world at the time, which was of course, MySpace. And there, her legacy was built. She became one of the most popular people on the site and gained a massive following that seemed to be obsessed with her every move. This was it, she had made it. Eventually, she even got her own reality show and her career skyrocketed. However, all of this success and notoriety seemed to be relatively short-lived. As her reality show career that swept the nation came to end, Tila seemed to go just a bit off the rails. Out of nowhere, she was hurling out anti-Semitic comments at the speed of light, shocking everyone and forever changing the perception of her as just a reality star for her millions of fans. As the years went by, everything just kept getting progressively worse, honestly. It wasn't just her anti-Semitic attitude that was rubbing pretty much everyone the wrong way. It was also her conspiracy theories. Gone were the days of her sex symbol status. She was now a conspiracy queen of the internet. From lizard people running the world to her being some sort of angel or goddess, she seemed to believe any and everything. The earth is flat, 9-11 was a hoax, and alien wars would soon destroy the earth and kill all those who didn't believe in her outlandish theories. By the day, the theories seemed to get more difficult to grasp and she was slowly ousted from social media sites as a response. Still, Tila is a relatively well-known figure whose fall from grace has been treated less as the apparent evidence of her multiple mental health struggles and addictions, and more as a carefully planned array of publicity stunts to keep herself in the limelight. So what exactly happened here? How did the once beloved, raunchy star become someone that instills confusion and concern for those that are still watching from a distance? How did she go from a shot at love to a shot of conspiracy theories? What is the true story behind the fall of Tila Tequila? Hello everyone and welcome to Dark Dives. I'm the Illuminati and today we're going to be taking a look at the rise and very sudden fall of Tila Tequila. Before she was spouting conspiracy theories all over the world, and even before she was named the queen of the internet in 2006, Tila, whose real last name is Wynne, lived a difficult life. At just one year old, she and her family fled from Vietnam to immigrate to the United States. They set their roots down in Houston, Texas, and throughout her childhood, Tila's family struggled. Both of her parents worked to try and take care of the family, with her mom working as a seamstress and her father washing dishes. But no matter how hard they tried, it was almost impossible to make ends meet. The whole family shared one bed and Tila says, at night you could literally hear all of the roaches, hundreds of them flying around. By the time she was a teenager, Tila Tequila had solidified her role as the wild child. She would sneak out at night, party the night away, and even experienced an ecstasy drug overdose as a young woman. Her wild streak wasn't all fun and games, and she recounts multiple instances of stealing cars, even robbing houses, none which she ever got arrested for. Some of this could just be chalked up to being a teenager. Most people make dumb mistakes when they're young, but that doesn't mean they'll turn into what Tila eventually did. But she had a dream. She wanted to be famous, and she didn't care what it took, she was going to do it. At first, her path to fame was through music, but when she was discovered by a Playboy scout, everything changed. Suddenly, she appeared on a variety of their online platforms, and she had suddenly found her way right into the limelight and the internet. She took the idea and ran with it, and little by little, she began developing a massive following and even came up with the idea to create her own website where people could buy access to her diaries, her chats, and of course, personal photos. 
Soon, she joined Friendster, but was eventually kicked off because of her sexual content. However, good old Tom from MySpace came to save the day. And for those who don't know, which Lord, I'm aging myself here. Tom is the creator of MySpace, whose picture spontaneously appeared on everyone's friend list when you first made your account. And MySpace is basically now just a relic of the old internet. Basically Facebook, but like with way more control and music, the good old days. I miss MySpace, honestly. Anyway, reminiscing aside, MySpace became Tila's new home. And before long, she became a social media household name. She posted an endless amount of glamour shots, recorded her singing, and was a pro in interacting with her fan base. She became known as one of the only models on the internet that paid special attention to her fan base, answered messages, and calling a new fan daily for a quick chat. As she told Time Magazine in 2006, there's a million hot naked chicks on the internet. There's a difference between those girls and me. Those chicks don't talk back to you. And it sounds weirdly pick me before that word was even like invented. Her business strategy certainly seemed to pay off though, as she quickly gained over 30 million views and 3 million friends. But this was just the beginning of social media, and she was the beginning of people learning that they could monetize themselves online for money. Before long, everyone knew who Tila Tequila was. If you logged into MySpace, you were often met with her picture placed in your friend list, even if you had never heard her name. And in many ways, you could say she was one of the first social media influencers, at least like one of the first big ones. She was selling calendars, clothing, music, and appearing in music videos and even movies. She was on top of the world and was seemingly unstoppable. And the best part, she built this on her own. Soon reality television came knocking and producers of a new show Shot at Love came begging at her door for her to be the lead that they were searching for. As a star that was seemingly so open about her sexuality, a reality dating show where she could pick between both men and women seemed tailor-made for her. At first, she admitted she was a bit skeptical. She'd become so accustomed to her world of independence, her ability to control her content, talk to her fans, and schedule her own life. But the tireless titan of self-promotion eventually caved, realizing that this was the way to make a fortune, to make herself a true household name. So A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila was born. Now, when it comes to A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila, I've got to admit, this was one of those shows that when it came on, I absolutely, one, was watching it. I was deeply intrigued. I was probably deep in the closet and didn't figure out that maybe I wasn't all straight. So watching this, I was like, oh, what does this mean? Why am I feeling a certain way right now? But it was a show that I also most certainly like hid from my parents. You know, they'd be like, what are you watching? And I'm like switching channels. I'm like, the weather. The weather is very interesting right now. Thank you so much for asking. But really the point I wanna make here is something like this didn't really exist on TV, especially not showcasing someone who was bisexual. I don't know if you guys remember, and again, maybe this is me aging myself, but back in the early 2000s and stuff, being bisexual was like pretty taboo still. And if you were like bi or, you know, essentially into men and women or, you know, into just literally not one like person or one type of person, it was almost like some people would, you know, like if you were bi, people were like, well, you're just doing it for attention. It was like a whole thing. I don't know if y'all remember that, but I do. That shit really scared me. It was very intimidating, honestly. So to see a show like this pop up like mainstream was a huge deal. Like it was really cool. But anyway, I digress. By the time of her groundbreaking reality TV show debut, Tila was already a massive cultural phenomenon. She was one of the first to make the jump from social media fame to TV notoriety, and the whole world was taking notice. She was profiled by Time Magazine and the New York Times. Everyone seemed enthralled by the woman who seemingly went from nobody to somebody in the blink of an eye. A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila was groundbreaking in many ways. The hectic and dare I say raunchy reality TV series caught the world by surprise, but it did more than that. Because as I said, for many people, it brought a sense of visibility to bisexuality something that was severely lacking back in 2007. Sure, it wasn't the greatest portrayal in the world, but with very few other opportunities for bisexuals to be shown in any light in the media, many took what they could get. Of course, not everyone was immediately thrilled with this new form of a dating show, and Tila was faced with some near immediate backlash from Christian news sites because, you know, of course they would. And I know, I know, that never happens anytime a new group of people suddenly get a chance for a shot in the limelight. Who would have ever thought this would have happened? But anyway, 
An article released by the Christian Post shortly after the new reality show was announced displayed a predictable array of homophobia and unfounded concerns about what a show would do for the children. Because we must protect the children, right? Jeff Johnston, an apparent gender issue analyst with Focus on the Family, a Christian group that massively opposes same-sex couples and pushes for traditional family values, which whatever the fuck that's defined as, decided to add this little tidbit to the conversation saying, "'Men and women are made in the image of God, and our masculinity and femininity reflect something of his wonder and glory. So it's no wonder the enemy attacks this area and works to create confusion, brokenness, and lust.'" Now, listen here, Jeff. Can I call you Jeff? Well, I really don't care. I'm gonna call you Jeff. I don't really think that it's that serious, my guy. It was an MTV show designed to specifically make money and be as entertaining as physically possible. It's MTV, that's what they do, especially back in that day. Do you remember like Date My Mom and stuff? Like no problem there, I guess, like whatever. Meet my booty son, Nick. I don't think they really cared about attacking Christianity, but like go off, I guess. You gotta be offended by something, right? Still, despite the predictable outcry by Christian people shocked to see a bisexual woman get her own show, it pushed on and became a massive success. So much so that it debuted as the number one show for MTV with their target audience and went on for two more seasons. Yes, it was officially a cultural phenomenon, much like Tila Tequila herself, but it wasn't all rainbows and butterflies as reports started trickling in that something might be amiss. Gossip papers and columns began to speculate that the whole show and Tila herself were a fraud. Since the entire premise of the show relied on her sexuality, it was an important aspect of the show itself and its popularity. However, questions began to emerge if the MySpace star's sexuality was true or all for show. Page six, and I know, I know, not reputable, but I mean, I'm sorry, but we're talking about kind of internet celebrity here. They released an article that claimed to have an inside source that said her bisexuality was a sham. According to them, she's made out with some girls in her past as all girls have, but she is not bi at all. Of course, this could be taken as bi erasure or a serious misunderstanding of her and bisexuality as a whole. At least that's what you would relatively hope because who lies about their sexuality for a TV show? But in 2018, Tila announced that this was exactly what she did, saying, "'As a matter of fact, I was never bisexual. The truth comes out. I was never a lesbian. I was never gay. It was all gay for pay. When I was filming that reality show, I had a boyfriend for the entire two seasons.'" And as a quick note, I want to say that would have been fine if Tila was an actor playing a role in a movie or a show or whatever. We don't have to question an actor's sexuality for a role, but this wasn't a role. This was supposed to be Tila playing herself. This was basically just queer baiting before that word even existed. And I know that reality TV is mostly, if not entirely faked, but this one was just a little bit upsetting. Yes, the show was not a wonderful representation of bisexuality, considering it definitely hypersexualized it and played into very harmful stereotypes, but at least it was some sort of representation when nearly nothing existed. Something that had never really been seen by a lot of mainstream media and their viewers, and suddenly to find out years later that someone just faked it all for the show is horrendously disappointing and lends itself to some incredibly common stereotypes that bisexuals are just faking their sexuality. So absolutely not a fan of this behavior. However, when it comes to Tila Tequila, this is actually the least worrying thing about her. As she was unceremoniously replaced from the show after the first two seasons, her life and fame went downhill fast, and the list of harmful, deplorable, and horrific things she has done and said seems to grow by the minute. It was a wild ride, and the fall from grace was rapid. So let's begin to explore that. Life quickly changed for Tila after her reality career tapered off. Seemingly desperate to stay in the public limelight, she became a fixture in gossip magazines, seemed to appear anywhere and everywhere for the paparazzi to snap a few pics, and went back to her previous business plan of uploading personal videos and pictures to remain relevant. Meanwhile, her life seemed to be falling apart around her. In September of 2010, she found herself in a heated and extremely public array of lawsuits with her NFL ex-boyfriend after she had accused him of choking and physically restraining her. After the San Diego district attorney declined to move forward with any criminal charges against him, she sued him for $1.5 million. In response, he sued her for 2 million, which he actually eventually won. Then shortly after, Tila was hit with a wave of grief when her fiance, Casey Johnson, unexpectedly died. 
The relationship between the two had repeatedly been speculated to be a publicity stunt, which after Tila's announcement that she was in fact not bisexual or gay would not be far from a stretch. But still, Tila seemed overwhelmed with grief and began posting regularly about her trials before spontaneously posting on Twitter, for now, I must disappear for a few months. Tila Tequila, a legend in the making, the saga continues. And just who the fuck refers to themselves in third person or calls themselves a legend in the making? But I digress. Now, even after that statement, she found herself in the news yet again, just a month later in a bizarre circumstance. For some reason, she had decided to attend the Gathering of the Juggalos concert, which if you may or may not know, was a show dedicated to the insane clown posse who infamously has one of the rowdiest fan bases I've ever seen. Before arriving at the event, Tila was made aware that she wouldn't be received well by the crowd. And if she ever felt uncomfortable, she was more than welcome to leave the stage. They even paid her in advance, but she still decided to go on and inexplicably removed her top in response to them booing her, which Juggalo Gathering LLC said seemed to mock and further antagonize the crowd. Suddenly, people in the audience began throwing rocks, glass bottles, firecrackers, and even human waste at the singer. It became clear that Tila was certainly not universally loved in the environment. Everything was quickly spiraling out of control and Tila soon found herself in rehab and announced that she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Shortly after, she began spewing hateful rhetoric and rubbing everyone the wrong way, all likely in the name of fame, by the way. By 2011, the transition from MySpace star to reality TV phenomenon to a conspiracy theorist with disgusting viewpoints and behavior seemed to be in full swing. Now, I wanna just give a quick warning here that the next few minutes are going to contain some absolutely atrocious and abhorrent language about Jewish people. Tila Tequila's anti-Semitism is horrific, and she goes from idolizing Hitler to saying some deeply upsetting things about Jewish people. Given the current rise in anti-Semitism and rhetoric about this and near constant discussion of the topic, if all of this seems to be just a little too much for you at the moment, feel free to just skip ahead to the next section. As Tila grew her presence online again, she began relying on a new style of communication, blogging. Unfortunately, that gave way to one of the most repulsive blog articles I've ever read in my entire life entitled, Why I Sympathize with Hitler, Part One, True History Unveiled. In it, Tila goes on a disgusting rant that sympathizes with Nazism and horrifyingly downplays the torment, kidnapping, and systematic murder of Jewish people during the Holocaust. This includes her saying things like, and I quote, this is a direct quote, I understand the Jewish people went through some shit too, but hey, guess what? So did the majority of people who suffered in every single war that took place. You were not the only ones. So please, if the rest of us can forgive and forget, maybe it's time you do also. And sometimes I just don't even know where to start. And this is one of those moments. Obviously, this is wrong. Asking people to just get over the Holocaust in which millions of people lost their loved ones, their rights, and their homes is insane. Equating it to other wars is also an abysmal ideal. Yes, all wars are horrific, but this one in particular, this one was built purely on hatred of certain people. That is a legacy that lives on forever and just can't be thrown to the side. Not now, not ever. Unfortunately, she continues and describes her belief that Hitler was merely a misunderstood leader who was trying to do the right thing for a country in their desperate time of need. Never mind the fact that his way of quote, helping the country was to attempt to murder all people outside of his preferred group. He turned the country against Jewish people, not out of desperation to save the Germans, but out of a deluded hatred and vendetta against them. He wasn't there to help anyone. He was there to cause as much destruction as he could, a fact that Tila clearly would like to ignore as she perpetuates the very idea that Hitler did when she said that Germany had been infiltrated by the enemy. If you'd like to read the blog, it's in my sources, but just know that it is by far one of the most disgusting things I've read so far. But Tila was evidently unapologetic about this viewpoint and she defended it tooth and nail. At one point, she released a picture of herself donning a sexualized Nazi uniform with an armband and cap, holding a gun and standing in front of what is obviously meant to be a concentration camp. This was apparently perfectly reasonable in her mind. She was also particularly fond of using Twitter to spew anti-Semitic bullshit, even one time tweeting that Ben Shapiro should be quote, gassed. Yes, Tila was entirely unforgiving about her language and behavior. That is until she, for some unknown reason, got another shot of reality TV stardom on Big Brother in 2015. 
Why we would give someone who had a history of this type of behavior yet another platform, I don't know, but Big Brother thought it was a splendid idea, apparently. According to a representative for Channel 5 in the UK, which hosted Celebrity Big Brother, they said they were unaware of her viewpoints when they cast her, which seems to be incredibly difficult to believe considering how open and consistent she has been with them. Still, the rep said, Unfortunately, Channel 5 and production company Endemol did not know about the views and attitudes Tila had expressed in social media postings prior to her involvement in Celebrity Big Brother. When they were brought to our attention, she was called to the diary room for a discussion with producers and was subsequently removed from the house. Upon her release from the show, Tila apologized, and in a statement she wrote, Back in 2013, I made a statement about Hitler not being a bad person and immediately realized soon after that I had made a terrible mistake that would ultimately come back to haunt me. During that time, I had been suffering from severe depression and drug addiction for many years prior to that. She goes on to say that she isn't proud of her mistakes and is not a Nazi supporter, a racist or anti-Semitic. So let's just break this down a little bit here, right? If she had immediately realized it was a mistake for her to write the blog about Hitler, then why did she keep up the anti-Semitic comments? Like the one about Ben Shapiro or the pictures of her in a Nazi outfit? It just doesn't seem like someone that knew immediately that they were wrong. And for the record, I am sympathetic to her struggle with mental health issues and addiction issues. Both are extraordinarily difficult and hard to deal with in life. But as we discussed with Kanye in one of the past episodes, they do not make you anti-Semitic. These thoughts, beliefs, and ideals need to exist outside of your mental health disorder. A mental health disorder does not cause those things. Just because you are bipolar does not mean that you're also a Nazi supporter. The two are not related. Still, her apology was very short-lived. Two months after the lackluster apology, she decided to post a picture of her baby daughter with a Hitler-esque mustache writing in the caption, "'One day when you grow up, "'you're going to have to apologize for this picture, young lady. "'It will come back to haunt you.'" Just one year later, she appeared again, this time at an alt-right convention where she had been seen doing the Nazi salute with two men, posting a picture that said Sig Hitler as the caption. And I don't know about you, but it still seems like she idolizes Hitler just fine to me. And yes, this certainly does not sound like someone who is actually apologetic for her actions, nor like someone that's ever going to change either. Her anti-Semitism seems to only grow through the years, getting bolder and more open by the second. But it's not the only concern that grows when you talk about Tila Tequila. Despite being banned on Twitter, she continues to be in the limelight within certain groups and is slowly but surely turning into a conspiracy queen, spreading her ideas and beliefs to nearly 1.9 million followers on Facebook. And before we go ahead to talk about the new conspiracy queen, Miss Tila Tequila herself, I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment to place today's sponsors here because honestly, I just need a couple minutes to refresh my head before going back into this shit. In a landscape where free and fast shipping is the norm, it can be hard for smaller e-commerce businesses to compete. Keep yourself competitive with ShipStation because when you use ShipStation, you can lower shipping costs, make returns easy, and keep your customers happy. And with all the time you save from automating your shipping tasks, you can keep your business growing all year long. ShipStation is absolutely amazing at managing multiple platforms to make sure that you know where you're shipping items, what shipper you're gonna use, how much it's gonna cost, and how efficient it's going to be every single time. It's super easy to manage all in one little easy to understand dashboard. And I seriously mean it. It integrates everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. So it doesn't matter how small or big your business grows into, ShipStation will be there for you every single step of the way. You can get up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates. And if that's not enough, if you use my promo code to try ShipStation, you'll get two months for free. With over 130,000 companies that have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation, it's no wonder that it's the right move to make. And by the way, 98% of companies that stick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. So keep your business growing all year long with ShipStation. Use promo code DARKDIVES today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. Again, that's ShipStation.com, promo code DARKDIVES. Now, as we're in the full swing of things going into 2023, I think goals for 2023 involve saving money. So if you're spending a ton of money on your phone bill every single month, what are you doing? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. 
As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton of money, with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. And personally with Mint Mobile, I use their like totally unlimited one, which comes out to 30 bucks a month. So like, I'm telling you, the savings are real. I used to pay over like 120 bucks a month for a phone bill. So to be paying like 30 bucks a month and still have fabulous service is amazing. All phone plans are going to come with unlimited talk and text, by the way. And of course, you're going to get high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And you can bring your own phone to any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. Or if you wanna go the route I did, change your phone number, change your phone, just get a whole new everything and just restart fresh. So to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash dark dives. That's mintmobile.com slash dark dives. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash dark dives. Shalom, look at this. God made this for me. He makes everything for me. Scriptures literally says all things were made for her and through her. Now, unfortunately for Tila Tequila, her downward spiral has involved a plethora of bizarre stories that she pushes out to her new array of loyal fans. Maybe some joined her for the theories themselves to support her horrific anti-Semitism, or just for a bit of entertainment. Regardless, she has certainly amassed a following that could leave anyone feeling concerned considering her antics. At one point, and around the same time she had written her atrocious piece regarding Hitler, she wrote something else, accusing George W. Bush of being a clone. She wrote, I am writing this article for a free internet medium in order to help the people understand. George W. Bush is no human. He is not the son of his alleged parents. He is a cloned president, the clone president. And yeah, that's one of the more ridiculous claims I've heard, but it's far from her only theory. She seems to have a special inclination to lean on the common theories of QAnon, such as the world being run by lizard people, Satanists and Zionists, and of course, the commonly held conspiracy theory that World War II and 9-11 were orchestrated by those very same lizard people, something called the New World Order and you know, the Illuminati and all that kind of shit. And considering that my name is a little goof and a gaff off of the Illuminati by spelling it all, you know, funky town, uh, I'm pretty sure that if she ever gets her hands on this, she'd be like, oh my God, Blair is a lizard person. And I'm like, babes, can you like, just keep that shit contained over there on your little corner of Facebook? Like, this is why people do not go on Facebook anymore, okay? Like, sorry, but I'm not sorry. Anyway though, she goes a little further with this whole like New World Order orchestrating World War II and 9-11. She also suggests that Paul Walker's death was also somehow part of this big overarching plot, which frankly, that's a new one to me. I haven't heard that little twist yet. But she also holds some of her own theories that came just out of the clear blue sky. She believes that she's a descendant of an alien race while also at the same time, a queen, angel, and the latest iteration of the Egyptian goddess Isis. Additionally, she also claims she can travel back in time and believes that there is a space battle coming in which all of her Facebook haters, who she calls brainwashed propagandists, are going to die. So yeah, I think you could argue that her theories are um, a little bit intense, but she sticks to them through thick and thin, regardless of the questioning. Even after all her predictions failed to come to fruition, considering that she predicted the space battle would occur in 2020, she holds strong. She believes that she and what she calls her council of alien saviors will one day need to save humankind. And just how does anyone take her seriously in any context? Like, why are we doing this? Why are we encouraging this behavior? This is not okay. Now in 2022, when her Instagram and Twitter accounts were both banned, Tila has turned to YouTube to continue pushing outlandish theories that are wildly concerning. She claims to be the hidden bride of Christ and has joined the growing amount of people that claim the earth is flat. Through all of this, she still tries to build on her career. As her conspiracy theories grow, her dreams of one day becoming a singer have not fallen by the wayside either. In fact, in 2019, she created a GoFundMe in an attempt to raise money for creating a gospel album. And I'm not kidding, that was a real thing. It was unsuccessful, I might add. Um, as she has seemingly spiraled out of control throughout the years though, one thing does remain abundantly clear. No one is there to help her. She's been open about her struggles with addiction, bipolar disorder, and even split personalities, but her antics have caused most of the public to respond to her in a less than compassionate manner, concerned for a woman that so clearly needs help, but as a form of entertainment, which after her anti-Semitic comments is both not shocking at all and extremely frustrating at the exact same time. She has slowly become just another celebrity who fell down the rabbit hole as the world watches on in horror. 
Unfortunately, the same thing that led her to her incredible rise in popularity may have also exacerbated her downfall. As a writer for Digital Trends puts it, having an unfiltered soapbox can exacerbate mental health issues by feeding young celebrities' desire for attention and validation. And sadly, Tila's story is not unique, as we have seen with many celebrities who've fallen down a similar path. Incoherent ramblings, disgusting posts, and the spreading of outlandish conspiracy theories automatically seem to come with a new sense of notoriety and attention, when in reality, it should lead to help. If one thing is clear, it's clear that Tila is in need of that. Treating her as a sideshow or a laughingstock isn't going to just make the problem go away, it's just going to exacerbate it. But for now, she remains as a cautionary tale, and we will likely continue watching on in shock as she continues to fall further into the darkness. But with all of that being said, that is where we're going to end today's episode of Dark Dives. I hope you learned something new here today. Thank you so much for your time and joining me for today's episode, and I look forward to chatting with you in the next one. Bye.